Gone is directed by Greg Gillespie. He's the director of Fright Night 2011 remake and Lars and the Real Girl and I, Tanya. It is based on the story from Eileen Bosch McKinnon, Kelly Marcel, Steve Zissis, Dana Fox, and Tony McNamara based on the 101 Dalmatian book by Dottie Smith. And the movie stars the great Emma Thompson, the great Emma Stone as Corilla DeVille. It also stars Joel Frell, Paul Walter ha Paul, Joel Fry, my bad, sorry. Paul Walter Hauser, Emily Beecham, Kirby Howell Baptist, and Mark Strong. The movie is essentially a kind of a prequel slash reboot of a 101 Dalmatian series. And basically it's like it feels like a soft reboot, but at the same time, it could be it's a prequel. And it's set in the 70s during the punk rock era. And it kind of reminds me of the Devil Wears product with a little bit of Joker. <laughs> and so the movie itself, I went in this movie with not that high expectation. I was like, oh, this might be something. I mean, it's Disney. Took my little niece to see it. We watched it. And I love this movie. Like, I honestly was loving this movie every five minutes there's a great song that comes on like these boots are made for walking or i want to be your dog or symphony from the devil which that plays at a great time in the movie and there's just so much good stuff in this movie i mean there's so much it's it's a really good soundtrack i mean if the plot doesn't end through you the soundtrack will i mean it's a great soundtrack i was sitting there watching this movie and they're saying i love this soundtrack i mean the movie kind of feels like it's basically you know, this is Stella, who is has an alter ego of Corella. She's basically a girl who gets into trouble when she was young in her youth, and her mom has to, you know, take her out of school, and she needs to help from this fashion lady, and something tragic happens to where Estella becomes an orphan, and she grows up to be a pickpocketer, and, you know, and then, of course, she gets a job, and she kind of falls upwards and becomes, like, working for Emma Thompson, who is really really a evil person like she is a cruel person and sad thing is there's real people like her in real life that's the sad part and so estella tries to you know first you know she plans on getting revenge but first she tries to like hey i'm gonna befriend her and stuff like that but then she plots her like she basically like throws that away and says i want to get revenge and she has like a split personality disorder kind of thing and she's like i'm gonna have corella come after her and it's and it, it's kind of, some parts are cheesy, but at the same part, like, there was one scene I was supposed to be sad that me and my niece both just laughed at, because it came out of nowhere, and we knew it was coming, but, it, like, it, it, the way it was done, I was just like, what? And there are some moments that are really cheesy, but at the same time, it's a really good story. Like, it literally, I mean, it is literally the 101 Dalmatians, you know? Like, it's setting up, like, a reboot of 101 Dalmatians, but at the same time, it's its own thing like it's not a prequel to the Glenn Close movie in fact I actually watched that beforehand and I'm like oh that's its own thing this is a thing although they did say if this movie does well there will be a sequel which it just got greenlit for a sequel so yay and uh but you know and there is a post Chris and it sets up 101 Dalmatians and um the movie is really good like the movie I actually really had a great time with it I mean it's not the best Disney remake ever but it is a really strong one. Like, I mean, it's not really a remake even. It's like its own story, an ordinary story that could set up a remake. And I really like about that. I'm going to tell you, what I love, though, is Emma Stone. Emma Stone is such a great actress. She is one of the greatest actresses of all time. I love her in everything she's in. Okay, well, she, and I love her in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Easy A is still one of my favorite comedies of all time. I just love watching it. I can watch that if I'm depressed, if I can watch it if I'm sad or lonely i mean there's so many things you can watch that movie and it's such a good time if you're just like hey, i'm bored watch it i mean it's a great movie i also love her in zombie land or i also love her in uh what's that one movie she was in it's not a good movie but she's great in gangster squad i like her in that uh there's another movie that she was in else that last oh i like her in la la land i actually watched la la land for her i was like i like her she's a good actress and so, yeah, and I was kind of bummed that she wasn't in the 21 Jump Street because they were originally they were going to do 21 Jump Street, and she was doing Amazing Spider-Man, so she couldn't do the 21 Jump Street, and so they cast Brie Larson, which I think she's she did a good job on herself. And I like, like I, and also she was going to be in Ghostbusters 2016, which I actually thought Kate McKinnon was a great did a great job, but I think you know she would have done a great job as well in that role. And I will say that you know this she. I was kind of like, oh, it's Corella DeVille. I don't know if like if she's going to Emma Stone it, you know? And I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's like, she's going to be, like, you know, adorable, you know? Because that's how the role she plays. She's, you know, 
punkish but adorable, you know, and that and so that's kind of her characteristics in movies. And I was like, and I hope that she plays in such a way where there is a kind of the punkish and adorable thing, but at the same time, she plays it in such a way where you're like, okay, I can get behind this. I mean, she, she even, it's, there's something even implied that she did heinously in the movie about the, it, there's a scene where they're playing in a park and there's a concert happening and she's like the front runner, like it's like a fashion show in a park where they're playing I Want to Be Your Dog. And it's, you find out, you're like, oh my God, did Cruella just do something heinous to where you're like, she achieved what Glenn Close could in 101 Dalmatians. But it turns out it's not what you think. And I'm like, oh, okay. But still, it's great. And I will say, Joel Fry from Game of Thrones. I believe it's Joel Fry. Is it Joel Fry? I could, I'm could. i sorry if I got the names wrong. But, you know, he, um, him and Paul Walter Housley, who play her, like, lackeys, you know, the goons, you know, that are in the original, you know, 101 Dalmatian, both the cartoon and the movie. And they're even in the book, I believe. They are hilarious in the movie, and I just got to say, they're both great in this movie. I love Paul Walter Housley. I love him. I know Joel was in, was he was in Game of Thrones, I believe. It was like in a season of Game of Thrones, I think, but I haven't seen him much after that, but I mean, I'm glad that he was in this. I mean, he's great in this movie. I mean, he's kind of like the leader of the group, and he's like a really strong, you know, role model. But at the same, uh, not role model, but he's the same, like, you know, he kind of looks out for Cruella, but at the same time, he's like, he knows where he stands. And at some time, you feel like, why are you being shitty to him? And it's kind of bums me out that sometimes that happens. But at the same time, he's really good, like, you know, to have on your side. Paul Walter is <laughs> just a moron. <laughs> but in a good way, like, he's like, oh, we gotta steal, like, every five seconds, he's like, okay, what's the job? What's the job? Okay, what's the job? And I'm just like, <laughs> he gets a little dog to do a job in the movie. I'm there laughing so hard. Like, it's not a job. And he just doesn't, he not understand. <laughs> like, it's just, it's so funny. And that's what I love about him. He's just like, it's kind of dumb, but it's in a fun way. And I really like that. And, uh, it, it's, it, it's like, they're both like, he's like the, the kind of the, the one you play that plays the laugh, you know, the laughs in a comedy that you play the laughs off of. He's <laughs> funny in the way to watch, you know, and there's even the one scene where <laughs> <laughs> at, at a ball at a it's a, like a masquerade ball that scene and he's so good in that scene i'm just like wow and there is there is even there's even like you know uh there's a story that you know it, it, it progresses through and it kind of does set up the next move which would be a remake of 101 dalmatians but at the same time i'm fine with if they never do another one which i know they are going to so yay and but uh there are some things i didn't like about it. like i feel like certain parts of the movie they didn't need it like they could have just like there's one scene that you know it's not really like it was just there like okay it's setting up this scene and it didn't really need to set up because the scene does itself where it kind of sets itself up so i'm like really you did not need this scene you know and i was thinking and then there are some like stuff that i called bs on like there's a scene that i laughed like what that, there's like there's no way that would have happened the way it happened i mean i understand it's a movie but like there's just certain things that you just find like defy logic and there's also a scene at the end that basically replays itself in that scene and that the that's not the scene i was like calling bs on then the, the last scene that the scene it's like a scene that something dumb happens with a cliff and it happens once at the beginning of the movie, and you're like, I was like, why? That's so stupid. And then the second time, it happens again with a different person, and I'm just like, why are all these people silent? Like, she doesn't see all these people. Like, everybody, it's like a group of people. It's like, you would not, like, if somebody, like, the three people walk behind you, and they're on rocks and grass, so it's not like it's silent, okay? And I'm sitting there watching going, that would not happen the way it happened. Like... And I'm just like, other than that, I mean, the little nitpicks. All in all, the movie is really good. Um, if you watch it, just as something to watch, it is something great to watch. I mean, it, you'll have a good time with it. It's not, some people say it's really dark. And there are moments of it that are dark. And there are some, uh, you know, stuff in the movie that, you know, some kids might be like, eh, I might. You know, because the kid is a little darker for kids than it's the usual. It's not like, you know, you know, Aladdin, where it's mostly a kid's movie with, with us and Will Smith in it. It's more of like, you know, a dark... It's kind of basically like The Devil Wears Product Meets Joker. It is. Only it's a much tamer PG-13 version. But I, I'm looking forward to Corella 2. And uh, 
I would say if I had to give this movie, I'm going to give this movie a B plus because that is just what I enjoyed about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to have a review for The Conjuring 3. I'm watching it tonight, so I cannot wait to review it because I'm so excited. I've been watching Conjuring 1 and 2 all day. I'm ready. I'm ready. I might even do a review right after the movie. I'm so excited. Ugh, I can't wait. Conjuring 3 is on. Woo! All right. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like what you see, you can just click, click, give this buddy a like to help the, just give it a thumbs up, you know, help the YouTube algorithm. All right, thank you, and just fall down the rabbit hole for more.